That's a little short for me. Um, good evening to the graduates, parents, family, friends, spectators, and basically the community at large. Welcome to quite possibly the weirdest and unorthodox guest speech Norway grad has ever had the pleasure of hearing. I'd first like to lay out three ground rules. I'll start by saying what a giant honor it is for me to be chosen to be your guest speaker tonight. The fact that me, as a 20-year-old, am considered dignified enough to attempt to lead you with some words of encouragement is truly humbling and proves to myself once and for all that I'm kind of awesome. <laughs> Number two, I've been warned three times by three separate people not to be mean or insulting to these graduates. I naturally replied, so this isn't a roast? As if I had never seen or heard a guest speech before? The fact that warnings came from multiple people has me a bit concerned about what my reputation is. I promise right now to be as clean and as nice as possible, as painful as that is for me. And finally, I will give the disclaimer that I gave these graduates when I accepted the job. I'm not promising funny. I'm not promising great. I'm not even promising good. I'm promising I'll do my best and that's it. <laughs> I will try and keep this speech as informal yet informative as possible, with none of those ridiculous inspirational sayings crap. That's not how I roll in general. But I also, I know what it's like to sit on that stage. I only graduated in 2010, so I'm not that old. I know that today was and is still a very exciting day. Congratulations. Care for you and you care for. 
Whatever the definition of success, balancing is always the method to achieve this. Once you leave your parents' house and embark on your own journey, you will realize that you are responsible for everything about you. You will no longer have the safety net readily available. Handling deadlines and accomplishing tasks will fall directly onto your shoulders. As the late, great George Jones said in song, I've had choices, you will too. Ultimately, and if you've taken Mrs. Dahl's life transitions class, you will know this, one of the biggest keys to success is time management. <laughs> Every day you will be flooded with tasks to handle and the order, quality, and quantity of which you do these tasks is up to you. Time management is something we're all born with, but can always improve on. University is a very good example of this. Last March, I had four essays due in three weeks. In addition to an exam and assignment and statistics, I hate that class. You better believe I was keeping track of what I needed to be done at what points and kept a strict timeline. Use a whiteboard or notepad if you have to. I know I have to. I can remember 99% of the capital cities of African countries, but if I don't have a list of shorthand things to do, I will likely forget something. Another key I will stress is strong financial management, which is sadly something very few people have in modern times. Your picture of your money should always be continuously updated. I watch my money like a hawk watches a mouse in a valley. There's a time to spend and there's a time to conserve. If you are barely making ends meet, you should not be looking at what expensive things to buy. However, total fiscal lockdown is not the way to live either. A mix of spending and investment is always the best strategy, at least in my view. Perhaps I can interest you in some Affinity Credit Union products <laughs> to watch your money prosper. And yes, I just pimped out my own bank. I'm not about a shameless plug. I'm also about pushing the boundaries, which is something I'd really like to stress to you above all rest. My least favorite word in the English dictionary is complacent. The basic meaning of complacency is that a person accepts what is given, wallows in it, and remains neutral about it for life. Excuse my foreign language, but that's bullcrap. Every day should be seen as an opportunity to stir the pot. I have never had enough spoons for the amount of stirring I want to do. Well-behaved people seldom make history is a quote I have adapted and now live by. Accepting the status quo is something I urge you to avoid unless it's absolutely necessary. I refuse to be complacent my entire life, and that has always caught me grief. Every single day was and still is a struggle to maintain a forward momentum. I have been so lucky and blessed to have the attributes I have, but the world is sometimes a mean and ugly place. I have never let some, anything stop me or define who I am. I've lost counts of the times I've been bullied in my life just for being different from the status quo. I've always done what I see fit and what I see right, and if that means I'm the odd one out, so be it. Every day, people will try to knock you down. The real key to succeeding in life relates to a story I read which is called The Law of the Garbage Truck. It reads as follows. Many people are like garbage trucks. They run around full of garbage, full of frustration, full of anger, and full of disappointment. As their garbage piles up, they need a place to dump it. And if you let them, they'll dump it on you. When someone wants to dump on you, don't take it personally. Instead, just smile, wave, wish them well, and move on. You'll be happier you did. I hate to get all campy and cheesy, but it does get better. Don't waste too much time trying to fit a square peg in a round opening if it's causing you grief. As a geography major, you may take my word on this. There's a whole world to explore. Life is full of setbacks, obstacles, and complete roadblocks. Most of the time when I've achieved something, I've been caught in an avalanche of problems which would not be back down the mountain. Ultimately, how you respond to problems is the key to success. Last year was a perfect example of this for me. Most of you know the story, but in April I lost my mother, who I'm very close with. This happened to coincide with the end of semester at university, meaning exam time. Due to the university's policies of making people sign forms, run around campus, jump through hoops, complete impossible puzzles, and sell their firstborn child to actually accomplish something on campus, I chose to go ahead and write the finals in between the drama of my everyday life. 
I wrote five exams the same week as my mother's funeral, had two weeks afterwards to finally process what was going on, and then went straight into a full summer semester of classes. People have got to be thinking, as much as I have, the fundamental question, why? To be honest, I got to do a lot of thinking while crisscrossing half the province multiple times. I believe it has come from the lessons my mother had taught me herself. For years on end, she struggled with illness and was constantly handed setbacks. However, rather than fold or ask for exceptions, she fought harder each time. This is how I choose to live also. Every day when I wake up, I give myself three options. Option A, wake up angry, be bitter with the world, grumble, moan, and complain about your situation and look to blame everyone. Option B, wake up in sadness, throw a pity party and only invite yourself. Or option C, wake up in mild optimism, stress yourself that certainly today cannot be worse than yesterday, and that life is out there waiting for you to participate in it. I've made a conscious effort to choose option C. Granted, I'm not perfect. I've had my days where anger and sadness seemed like the way to go. One day on my two weeks to myself, I sat in bed the entire day and didn't get out unless it was absolutely necessary. I've also had my share of meltdowns. I had one on the May long weekend while driving around Saskatoon. It was not pretty. <laughs> Think the one chick in the movie Freaky Friday in the therapist's office who's so emotional you can't even understand what she's saying. That was me and it was embarrassing. Thank goodness it was late at night. Some days you may feel like a walking failure at life. This is not true. It is not a negative thing. Failure gives you the opportunity to change and rebuild and learn from your mistakes. If we never fail, we never change. We would be robots. In summary, you should work hard towards your goals, relax to refresh, manage time and money, be unique, different, and always changing, make mistakes and learn from them, and always fight or hold some a level of optimism for the future. Darcy, if you've made it to this speech, pardon a speech, you've not sworn or made an offensive reference to get you kicked off stage, and you can actually wrap it up. Fantastic! Give yourself a pat on the back. In conclusion, I'd like to state how honored I am to be up here as your guest speaker. It really is a feather in my imaginary cap, and something I am truly proud of. I'd also like to shift the focus to you guys. I know each and every one of you will be successful in whatever you choose to do, or wherever you end up. If you're going into post-secondary, great. Education is one of the most valuable things in the world that no one can steal from you. If you're going directly into a career, fantastic. Work ethic is something you are born with and should use it to the best of your ability. You are given the skills, the attributes, and the drive to accomplish whatever you set your minds to. You have an entire world at your disposal. Get out there and do something with it. I just hope you've gathered something even remotely small from this speech. And if you're a hater and didn't like what I had to say, go ahead and keep on being a garbage truck. I ain't picking up your trash. <laughs> Congratulations, graduates. Best of luck, and good night, everyone.